Well, I thoroughly enjoyed my weekend with all the great fights that we had available to us between uh, MMA and, and boxing. I actually had a split screen on my television. Um, I was watching the David Lemieux fight, uh, David Lemieux and Gabe Rosado fight at the same time the Anthony Pettis and Gilbert Melendez fight was going on. And I actually gave priority to the Melendez Pettis fight simply because that's a fight that I've been wanting to see for almost for a little more than two years now. And it was it was everything I wanted it to be. All the excitement I wanted it to be. Now my prediction, I had Melendez winning the fight. Um and he pretty much displayed uh pretty much his 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 overall ability. He applied a lot of pressure. Um but that <laughs> the pressure he applied is what hurt him. Now if you guys haven't already jumped on this bandwagon, man, Anthony Pettis is a fucking beast, man. I said in the last video that Anthony Pettis is one of my favorite fighters, and he showed you exactly why he is elite in this sport. He is one of the best fighters in the UFC today. This dude is a fucking beast, man. Melendez is applying pressure, applied a little bit too much pressure, left himself open for a counter uppercut, gets hit, staggers, grabs Anthony Pettis' legs <clears throat> to, to try to keep himself from falling to the mat. But in the process, he's a little overzealous with his pressure, leaves that neck wide open. Next thing you know, this motherfucker's in one of the tightest guillotine chokeholds he's ever been involved in. And he's forced to tap out for the first time in his career. That's all she wrote. All it took was two rounds, man. And I had Gilbert Melendez winning the first round, and I had him on the on his way to winning the second round. And he just made a mistake, got guillotined up, and that's that's what happens, man. I mean, this dude, this dude Anthony Pettis is a fucking beast, man. Like he's he's literally John Jones status. If y'all have if y'all haven't noticed that yet, man, this dude is John Jones status. The only reason why I personally say that. You can't say he's equal to John Jones in his respective division is because he has two legitimate losses. Okay? John Jones had a disqualification loss doing uh, 12 to 6 o'clock elbows. That's the only loss he has. He's never lost to anyone. He's thoroughly dominated his respective division for, for a while now. The closest loss he ever had was against um, Alexander Gustafson. And as soon as Gustafson turned his literally did a motherfucking 180 and started running away from John Jones, that was the end of that fight. So, you know, I won't disagree with anyone going around saying Anthony Pettis is on John Jones level. I won't disagree with that shit at all. Just me personally, I would say he's already shown that he's he's vulnerable to losses. He's already lost. But the UFC, man. And that's what makes John Jones so good. The UFC, you can fucking lose to anyone. <clears throat> Literally. You make one mistake, man, you're done. And John Jones has not made that mistake yet in all this time. So that's why he's on a, a on a own his own tier by himself. You know what I'm saying? In my in my opinion. But man, look out for Anthony Pettis though. This is the second fight in a row where he has submitted opponents that are uh, pretty much widely known as unsubmittable, if that's even a word. <laughs> guys that guys that can't be submitted, okay? Gilbert Melendez has never been submitted in his career until until Saturday night. Then you've got, right before that, Benson Henderson. He's only been submitted one time, and that was way back in 2007. So, and he did this shit, respectively, in rounds one with Benson Henderson and, Henderson and two with Gilbert Melendez. He did it before the halfway point of the fucking fight, man. This, this dude is a beast. You know what I'm saying? So I don't see anyone, anyone beating Anthony Pettis in the lightweight division. Oh, but there is one guy that can give him the matchup of his life. And that's Khabib Nurmagomedov. Now, this dude is a beast, man. His biggest thing is grappling. And he grabs you and throws you across the fucking octagon. This dude is a beast. 22-0. I think he was the number two contender behind Gilbert Melendez during this fight. Melendez loses. That's going to drop him a couple spots. And I think Nur uh, Nurmagomedov 
is going to take that first spot and the fight's going to happen if he takes that first spot because MMA is not like boxing where motherfuckers can duck motherfucking number one contenders for 15 years and shit without giving them a title shot. No. In the MMA, if you're in a, in a, in a division, there's only one title. There's only one king. And if you won that title, you got to fight that king. So I think that fight's gonna be gonna happen. That's gonna be the next fight for Anthony Pettis, and I can't fucking wait to see that shit. Let's move along to Johnny Hendricks versus Robbie Lawler. Another bullshit ass decision in the in the fucking in the sport of UFC, man. Another bullshit ass decision, and it goes coincidentally against Johnny Hendricks once again. Now, I don't care if you on YouTube. I don't care. If you on Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I don't give a fuck if you in your goddamn crib on the couch with your hands on your nuts. I don't care. You cannot fucking convince me that Robbie Lawler beat Johnny Hendricks. You can't. You can't. There's no fucking way Robbie Lawler won this fight. Now, I don't know what fight the judges were seeing, and, and this is the problem with, with the UFC. Not saying that boxing doesn't have this problem. Boxing has has a lot of problems with uh, with corrupt scorecards. Just think uh, Canelo Alvarez versus Arislandi Lada. I mean, there's a lot of corrupt scorecards. Uh, fucking um, Mickey Bay and Miguel Vasquez. You know what I'm saying? Corrupt scorecards are in the sport of boxing, definitely. We know this, right? But the UFC, it's worse because it's not like there's 12 rounds where... You have a lot of leeway to score, uh, you know, rounds differently. In boxing, in a 12-round fight, there's 120 points that you can distribute between both fighters. If it's a 10-round fight, there's 100 points you can distribute between both fighters. In the fucking UFC, there's 50. That's it. There's only five fucking rounds, man. How can you fuck up a five-minute round or, yeah, uh, five rounds for five-minute fight. How can you fuck that up? You know what I'm saying? Let's break it down because it ain't that long. There's no way Robbie Lawler won round four, three, or two. No way. And that's three rounds for Johnny Hendricks. That's already a, uh, that's already a, a, a one-point win for Johnny Hendricks right there if he scored the fight correctly. Now, you can make a case for rounds one and five. But in my opinion, he lost round one, too. So I had this fight four rounds to one for Johnny Hendricks, and that's exactly what the fucking commentators had. And and, and it's funny, <laughs> speaking of them, this is the funny part right here. There was so much shock, and the MMA is known for this. Whenever there's bad decisions, they don't really want to say that it was a bad decision. The only motherfucker that's a part of, M that's a part of the MMA that's the realest motherfucker there is Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan will say, hey, that's bullshit. He's the only one. Everyone else, they won't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? But even for this decision, Joe Rogan was a little quiet, or he was a little, you know, against the fact that that Robbie Lawler won. He said he has to go back with nobody talking to him, just like just like a uh, real boxing enthusiast do in the sport of boxing when they watch fights. Go back home, sit alone, nobody in your ear, no motherfucking volume on the TV, and watch the fight. That's exactly what Joe Rogan said he has to do to watch this fight again. Okay. To see who really won it. Right? But the other commentators is like trying to make an excuse for why he scored the fight the way he did. So it doesn't make MMA look bad. I'm sorry, man. There's no fucking way <laughs> Robbie Lawler won this fight. No way. There's no way. He won round five. That's it. There's only two points where Johnny Hendricks was in trouble. The end of round four. With like 30 seconds left in the fucking round. I don't give a motherfucker the round just because he's landing shots for the last 30 seconds. And it wasn't really even clean shots. It was just Johnny Hendricks, you know, uh, on his on his knees on the ground covering his head while Robbie Lawler's throwing down elbows to pretty much hitting his hands. That's that's a Johnny Hendricks round, man. He got his ass whooped for four and a half minutes. <laughs> Lawler did. But in round five, you know, Johnny Hendricks is like a deer in headlights, man. If it was one more minute of that round. He possibly could have gotten knocked out. So I did give that round to Robbie Lawler, but that's the only round he got. Man, one judge had it 49 to 45. That's four rounds to one Lawler. Utter motherfucking bullshit, man. 
And that's what pisses me off about the UFC. That's what pisses me off. I've seen way... The UFC is nowhere near as old as boxing. But they have probably just as much horrible-ass decisions, man. Probably not as much, but shit, if you did a ratio between the two sports, the ratio would be fucking close. You know what I'm saying? Good decisions to bad. The ratio would be kind of fucking close there. You know what I'm saying? And this is this sport is, is you know, it's only like, what, maybe, maybe going on 20 years old, possibly. So... It's, it's ridiculous, man, but I'm going to go ahead and conclude this. Do what you do underneath the video, but be real. This is real talk for real fans. One.